Hey, what's up my friends? Welcome to the live stream. Uh, it's me, your friend Pat, and we're here for another exciting episode of Measuring Dev Skills with Code Signal. In the last episode, we kind of talked about the idea that we want the interview process to sort of mirror what we should expect from the job itself, right? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to spend the interview asking the candidate to reverse a linked list, for example, if that doesn't really have much to do with their actual job responsibilities. So we're taking a look at a new type of task today. This is a file system task. Uh, specifically, we're looking at this one matrix project over here. So what we're trying to do is essentially implement some object oriented programming. We want to implement this matrix object over here. Uh, and we, we have a list of all the things that we want it to be able to do. Now, in this particular case, we're looking at a situation where some of the code is already written for us, uh, but not much of it, as you can see here. I mean, we kind of have like some placeholders for the constructor and some of the other methods, but uh, there's not really much in them. They're not doing what we want them to do, that's for sure. Uh, so what makes this different from the type of task that we've looked at so far? Well, for one thing, we have this file system. And that's really the main thing that sets it apart. So we could add or subtract files from this as we desire. Maybe for example, I want another file just for my utility functions. So I, I can create a new one, write some functions in here, which I can then use throughout the project. We could also think about this from the point of view of the recruiter, right? We could structure something however we want. Maybe uh, if the job has to do with writing an app or, or maintaining an app, then we might have a complex tree of files to go through over here and the candidate would need to have an understanding of how to navigate that. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to delete this file because we're not actually going to use it. We've got matrix.py. This is basically where we want to do, well, basically everything, right? This is where we want to write the class that we're being asked to. So we might wonder, well, what's up with these other things over here? So we've got basic tests, advanced tests. This is not exactly the same way we're used to seeing this stuff. So normally we would have uh, down here in the console, we would have for an algorithmic challenge anyway, a bunch of inputs and outputs, right? Like uh, maybe the, uh, the input is, uh, in this case, some sort of matrix or, or some array of numbers and then the output. Well, it's tough to say because in this case, we're talking about a situation where that input output kind of system doesn't really apply, right? In the sense that we want to test if this object is working. So we want it to be something that can do what? Create a new matrix, something that can make an identity matrix, a zero matrix, check, check if it's a vector, something that can transpose the matrix or scale it up. So basically uh, multiplying all the values by some scalar. So in order to do that, we might want to do something where we say, okay, make a new matrix, scale it up by, uh, so for example, we could say make a new matrix that's like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six or something, scale it up and we'd expect it to be uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, if I, if I remember the example correctly, uh, if we're multiplying by two, for example. So using these tests, we can essentially use unit tests, right? So, oh look, the example I was just talking about. Uh, so. Basically, this is just this test over here is to check to see if the initiation worked properly to make sure it has the right number of rows and columns to see if it's the matrix of it is equal to what we expect it to be. We have tests for all the other functions here as well. So testing the identity, we can see if I make a new identity matrix with a dimension of one, is it just this? If I make one with a dimension of two, is it equal to this, right? So this allows us to make more complex tests, things that can go in and, uh, and check things that just a regular input output system would not be able to do. So if you've been following along with previous episodes, you're probably not going to be too surprised at how all of this works. It runs on the code runner server, which is a dedicated server uh, just for running this stuff free of noise or interference or any other concerns we might otherwise have. It's basically going to send all of these files over into a Docker container. It's going to run these scripts over here, and it's basically going to 
check if these things are what they're expected to be. Now, right now we're looking at a Python example, but there are ones for other languages as well. So for example, in JavaScript, we might use uh, Mocha or Chai or something to, to run unit tests for us and then return whether or not it's passing those tests. So this is a nice thing because again, it, it more accurately emulates the actual dev experience. I mean, we're not gonna have like a, a set of input output files, right? Um, normally for, for, for tests, but we would wanna write tests to make sure that our app is working. You know, if we make a change, is it still working? So this is the sort of thing we would normally expect in more of a dev environment. And that's why this would be a, a more appropriate question for, well, if you wanna interview someone to work on an app or something like this, where you do expect them to be able to write or deal with unit tests. Um, okay, anything else we wanted to say about this one? Well, I mean, yeah, we've got basic tests and advanced tests. So in the same way that we normally would have like the visible and hidden tests, in this case now we have separate files to represent our different levels of tests. So we can have just kind of surface level things and then the more advanced like uh, corner cases and stuff like that, edge cases, that sort of stuff can go in here. And you might be looking at these little icons thinking, oh, what's that all about? Well, basically the lock means we cannot edit these. I mean, that would make it a lot easier, right? If we could just edit the unit tests to make it say, yeah, it's correct every time or something like that. So we can't edit these, we can only edit this stuff over here, the thing that's being tested. For this one, a regular user would not even be able to see these. So uh, this is just from my status as an admin that I'm able to actually show you these in this case. So this is another exciting type of, uh, of task that's available in order to measure skills, or dev skills with code signal. Uh, we'll take a look at another type of task next week. So join us then and uh, in the meantime, have a great week. All right, see you later.